morning everyone so today I am trying some affordable makeup not something I do very often on my channel but there are some brands that I absolutely love and I do want to share them with you and one of those is ALF and the other one is Colourpop so over the last few months I've been collecting numerous items from ALF as they release new items so I'm going to show for you here today the products that I've enjoyed the most out of these. I'm not going to show you all of them. Some of them have been fails. I will tell you the ones that were fails, but I won't be trying them. I'm going to show you my favourites. And I've also got this stunning eyeshadow palette from Colourpop. This is the Precious Metals eyeshadow palette. So I'm going to be doing three looks with this for you today. And with the new e.l.f. Soft Glam Satin Foundation, I've got a full wear test actually over two days to show you so you can see how this has been working for me in numerous different ways. And if you're new here, hi my name's Hannah, I'm 47, not a professional, just somebody who really loves makeup and beauty and I upload at least twice a week here on my channel. I would love it so much if you liked and subscribed and also if you comment below, that really is super helpful and I love chatting to people. And if you're already subscribed, welcome back and thank you so much for returning to my channel. And my skin type, which might be useful, especially with a foundation, I've got fair to light skin with neutral undertones. It's combination with a slightly oily T-zone. So that's enough about me. Let's get on with this video. And if you're not new to my channel, you might notice my hair looks a bit different today. That's because I've basically not straightened my hair as the humidity changes, even though it's not warm in the slightest in the UK right now. The humidity seems to have changed and it makes it a bit more tricky with straightening my hair so I just let my natural waves do what they want to do. So I have um, have used a little bit of a diffuser, that's what I usually do if you're interested, and a few styling products but this is just how my hair is with the natural wave, mm. if you're curious. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with the makeup. So I picked up the Jelly Pop which is a limited release from e.l.f. I do believe this has been released before but it was very popular so it was re-released. I didn't get it the first time so I've got it this time. So I will, will be showing you all of these today but I'm going to start now with the primer. Here is how the primer looks. It has quite a strong watermelon scent which I must say I really enjoyed using these products. This is a very thick primer and it's one of those sticky ones so they help your foundation to grip. They certainly don't help with eliminating pores or anything like that, but they do help your foundation to stick and last. So I'm going to concentrate a lot now on the areas where my foundation wears away, which is around my mouth and nose. I'm going in with a second pump. I've already done my eyebrows, but I did pick up the brand new brow laminating gel from e.l.f. So this comes with a brush on one end and then it has the gel on this end. It looks like this. And the reason I'm not using it today is this was a definite fail for me. I really did not like this. I could see some of the white in my eye eyebrows and it felt sticky even by the end of the day if I touched. I really, really didn't like it. It does hold them firm, I will give it that, but I will not be using that one again. So now onto this new foundation just launched. I'm showing you two because I've picked up these two shades. This one is Fair Neutral and this one is Light Neutral. So it's number 13 and number 21. I did this thinking it would be my winter and my um, summer shades, but I've actually found that to get my correct summer shade, I need to mix the two together. I'll, I'll show you how that works now. And I have tested out using them separately. That they're, they're just not working for me at the moment. Possibly when I'm very pale, this one might work, but at the moment it definitely wouldn't. And if you already have the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation in your collection, you might be wondering what the difference is between the two. Well, this one, first of all, is £9. This one is only £8. And this one has 20 millilitres, and this one has 30 millilitres. Obviously, the packaging is different. This one is a sort of heavy acrylic. Feels like glass, but I think it is acrylic. And this one is a squeezy tube. So and this one comes with a pump. So those are the differences, but there's a key difference and that is the skincare. The new one has lots of infused skincare and is a lot more lightweight. I did actually do a side-by-side -side comparison of both of these. I won't show you the full application, but I will show you certainly a few clips from that now. So here's that video comparing these two so you can see them both. But let's try them on side-by-side. -side. This is the shade Pearl and this is the original formula. 
Both are described as buildable and lightweight and long lasting, but the old version is described as being medium to full coverage, whereas the new one is described as being medium coverage. Now I'm applying Fair Neutral in the new formula. This new formula contains hydrating hibiscus and other fruit extracts which are all hydrating. Whereas the old formula just had glycerin in for hydration and for me that's the immediate difference. The change in hydration is very obvious as soon as I apply the new formula. The old formula felt more powdery, more heavy. This one it actually looks more radiant and definitely gives me a bit of a glow you can see straight away and it feels like more of a refreshing skincare. So it's the old formula and there's the new formula. This one's definitely giving me a bit more full coverage and this one is definitely giving me more lightweight radiant coverage. Both settling down nicely on my skin but I much prefer the new formula, much prefer it. What do you think? The new one has 36 shades and if you don't like your shade you can return it and get another shade so that's a guarantee from e.l.f. so I think that's very good actually considering the price on this. And it says it's suitable for dry, oily and combination skin. So let's get on with the application. Now I found using a sponge to be the best application for me, but I'm just gonna very quickly show you the colors on their own. So this one is the 13 Fair Neutral. If I show you how pale that is, I just think it's way too pale. I don't know if in winter maybe that would work, possibly, because I am wearing a tan. And then I'll show you 21, which is the light neutral. Now this one looks too warm to me and a bit too deep. So I would say I'm somewhere right in the middle of the two of these. So I'm going to take off a little bit from the face there because I don't want to apply it that way. So I'm taking a bit off and I'm going to show you how I've been mixing this. I've been putting basically half on my hand of each one like this and then getting a sponge and just patting all of it into the palm of my hand to get it nice and warm and spread out like so and then I'm getting the shade I most prefer which is this. So this is giving me a little bit of warmth and it's not too pale so maybe in the winter I might still need to use a little bit of the other one to do that. The first thing to note with this is it applies very, very quickly. I don't need to do much work at all. And my problem areas seem to accept it straight away. It's not that sort of caking where you have to really work it in. If you see on my nose, it just seems to go straight away into my skin quite nicely. I'm wearing my usual skincare underneath. I'm going in with the same amount again, patting it out and then finishing off the rest of my face. So that's my full face done. I really like how radiant it is and I really like the way it sits on my skin with the first application. Now I wouldn't go over any of my trouble zones with any more because caking will definitely happen because I know from testing this but I can put a little bit more in this area here where I might just want a little bit more coverage and it does let me put a little bit more but it does start to move the base so I wouldn't say it's hugely buildable so I wouldn't try to build this up too much in fact it does move quite easily generally I found this is something that really does need to be set if you want to lock it in so I do get on quite well with the elf halo concealer but I'm not going to use that one today because I have tried it with this and it didn't work very well and it did cause caking issues. So I'm going to go to one of my concealers that I can really rely on. So I'll be using the Natasha Denona concealer today. I also tested their new pressed setting powder and this was a total disaster. So I won't be using this in the video. This one, I think it was about three or four pounds, exceptionally cheap. It's called Prime and Stay Finishing Powder. So maybe I shouldn't be thinking of it as setting, but when I used this, it looked super cakey. I got rid of all the radiance completely. I looked very powdery, very makeupy, and very cakey. I just really did not like this one at all. So I'll just go off and do my concealer and set everything down and then we'll be back to do contour. So this isn't a new product. I just wanted to show it because I am still really loving it. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty One, the contour. They do have this in highlight and blush. And this is in the shade Fair to Light. So it is a very light one. So I need to squeeze it. This one you don't turn. 
So I've got absolutely loads then. That's a little bit too much. It's nowhere near as deep as the Charlotte Tilbury, so it does give me quite a different finish, but it's actually pretty much a perfect contour shade. I can be quite generous with it because it just blends out very easily and quite quite light really. I do actually have an e.l.f. contour brush here which is quite a good one for the nose and lip area. If I just show you quickly how easily this works. It really is super easy to work with. It's a very natural contour for me. So I've contoured and set my face. This is £9 by the way if I didn't mention that and I think I didn't mention that the Jelly Pop primer is £10 which I think is a little bit strange when you think you're getting all of this foundation for £8 but anyway it is a very nice primer and there's quite a lot of products. So these both have 30ml in and the primer will last double the amount of time because you don't need as much really so but still I don't expect to pay more for a primer than a foundation so that's a bit odd. So now I'm going to go on to bronzer and this is a new bronzer, their primer infused bronzer. I've got this in the shade light and this is one I've really enjoyed from the minute I first tried this and this is £7. So I need to be a bit careful because it's quite pigmented and then just start sweeping this up. So obviously that was a very careful dab. But I do like the way that this immediately sits on my skin and it does sort of melt in. And I can tell you that this really does last, so there's something about this primer infused. I'm not entirely sure what the ingredients are, but it really does last very well. So for £7, I think this is a really good bronzer. I really do. I can see me using this quite a lot. I really love the finish of it and I love the shade, so definitely recommend this one. And I also have been enjoying the new Primer Infused Blush. So this is also £7. This is matte, just like the bronzer. And this is in the shade Always Crushing. It's pretty pigmented, so I need to be careful. See, when I'm careful, it's really, really pretty. And again, it's got that sort of natural application. It just blends. So there's something about this Primer Infused formula which is really working very well I think. I have powdered the whole face though because I have found this foundation does move as I said earlier if you don't powder it down so this is probably working better on top of the powder as well I think. And I've got the Jelly Pop Glow Stick which is the last thing in this watermelon range and this is £7. This is how it looks. That's how much you're getting for £7 and you do not need much of this at all. And it's got that lovely watermelon scent, honestly. You really notice it as you apply it, it's so refreshing, I love the scent. Now the best way for me to apply this, I've tried putting it straight on and it is moving things underneath. And I've tried it with a brush, which is quite good if you take the brush straight to it and put it on. But I've actually found the best way with this one is with my finger. I'll just show you, this literally just sort of melts in. And it really is very pretty. I actually find it quite similar to the one from Dior, which is quite crazy, really, when you think about it. And the Chanel one, the Chanel stick. I think it's quite similar to that, the finish. And how easy it is to use. And this gives quite a natural sort of wet look, shine which doesn't particularly emphasise pores. I do really enjoy this sort of highlight. I'll take a little bit of this by just patting it onto the nose. And the cupid's bow. Sorry, this is the last thing in the Jelly Pop range, the Glip Glow Reviver. This is in a limited edition sheer pink with shimmer and watermelon scent. And this is £8. I'm putting this on now because I'm actually going to take it off to show you my favourite current combination on the lips from e.l.f. But I really do love this. I just wanted to show you. It's quite pigmented look. It's got a lovely shine. The doe fits on these are so soft. The oil, it's not quite as thick as Dior. I think it's a bit of a dupe for Dior though. So 
if you're looking to get the dual ones and you just want to spend a bit less this is definitely a good option it smells absolutely beautiful <laughs> so yeah there is that shimmery lip oil so now onto the eye look and I've got this beautiful palette here from Colourpop. I always look at the releases from Colourpop and very rarely do I see one that I think I have to have but when I do I'm very very rarely not delighted to be honest because the formulas and the prices are usually fabulous and look at this anyone who knows me will see why I had to just buy this the minute I saw this. You get 30 shades here and it's £35 but it's worth looking out for sales which they regularly have because I managed to pick this up in the sale and I paid £24.50 for this so what I did is I actually picked up another one I've had my eye on for ages and that's the Stone Cold Fox. I'm not trying this on now but I just wanted to show you. So again I paid £24.50 but I think it's back up to £35 now but this as you can see beautiful colour story and I'm trying to experiment more with cool tones maybe not so much in the summer but I, I've wanted this one for ages and if you're in the UK with Colourpop if you spend over $60 it's free shipping which is fantastic really when it's coming from the US so if you're tempted by Colourpop a lot of people in the UK often say they can't get it but you can you can order from Colourpop and they will ship it can take up to about three weeks but it's well worth the wait I think so if you just Collect everything that you really want from Colourpop and wait until you hit that $60 mark. And once you do, then you won't have to pay a pound for shipping. So I think it's worth it. And I also picked up the six jelly shadows, which came with this exact same collection, the Precious Metals. I'm not going to be using these today and I haven't tested them. So if I find that some of these are very good, I will definitely show these in a different video for you. But just to give you a quick idea rather than swatching through them all you can see through the back there the different shades that you get and there's the last two this is how they look inside I'll just show you one of them very very messy you can see so you do need to be careful when you use these it's described as jelly and I suppose it does feel a little bit spongy it's a bit like a wet sort of spongy feel to it not as thick as the Surat Souffle if you're familiar with that but similar idea so if I take a bit of this now swatch it here for you to give you an idea of the sort of impact these have so you can imagine these will look glorious on the eyes so the way I would use those would probably be for a almost a one and done because they're such high impact shades and just have a little bit of brown in the crease. So there's so many shades with this eyeshadow palette I really don't want to dip into anything other than this today. I've been trying this for the last few days and I love it and I have done two other looks with this and the third one that I love so I'll show you the third one but I will just show you how the first two looks were on my eyes so here's a quick video showing you those. <laughs> start with this shade here which is called too much there's quite a bit of kickback with all of these so you do need to be careful and I'm actually going to use a shade today a glittery one which I already know gives fallout so I probably shouldn't have done this last but hey ho I've done it now I've tried all of the formulas in this palette and I'm not getting any particular fallout as long as I tap the brush off apart from these glitter ones so you can afford to do your makeup first with most of these if you tap off not the one I'm showing you today so you won't usually find with Colourpop that they're super pigmented not like the Natasha Denona for instance where you just need a tiny bit you do need to build these up a bit but that is quite good if you're looking for something that's very user friendly because you're less likely to make a big mistake I'm running the same shade underneath just to create a base with this lightest shade I'm using. So I'm going for quite a warm look today so I'm going to go in with this one which is called Invest In Me and I'm going to start taking this into the outer V and across the first half of the lid over the crease sorry first half of my crease I'll get my words right today I'm running the same shade underneath as well but stopping halfway this time 
And I'm going to take this, which is the lightest matte, on a fluffy brush. It's called Feel the Chemistry. And I'm just going to run this around the edges just to soften things out a little bit. I'm going to go in with a bit of NYX glitter glue, hoping that I won't get quite as much fallout when I use this glittery shade. But it really is probably the prettiest shade in this palette, palette for me. Not that I've tried every single one, because that would probably take me about three weeks. <laughs> yeah. I do find that using this glitter glue is very helpful. So I'm just tapping this on with my finger across the the mobile lid. So the two really glittery shades in this palette are these two here. So in my, I think in my second look I showed you, I used this one where I went for a more cool toned look because as you can see the palette is pretty much split into warm and cool which I love and it's quite cool to actually mix warm and cool together so so many things you can do with this but this is the warm toned glittery one so this is the one I'm going to use today this is called hot basic I'm gonna blow on the back of my finger hoping that I'm not gonna to have too much fallout and I'm just gonna press straight onto the glitter glue look at this and I think this is definitely the way to go with this so that it, it adheres straight away to the glitter glue without all the fallout, which got worse throughout the day for me. So I'm hoping this will really settle nicely. Can you see why I love this glitter and this shade? It is beautiful. Smooth out here with a fluffy brush. It's very hard to control this glitter. It's already spread a little bit up here if you can see, but anyway. I'm actually going to wet my brush to apply a little bit of this underneath. I've still got a little bit of fallout. It really is difficult with this glitter. So you do need to accept using these glitters. You're likely to get a little bit of fallout on your high cheekbones here. Anyway, I still love it. Just wanted to show you actually that jelly that I put on, which was very wet on application when I showed you how it dries down. It slightly smudges, but not much. It really is dry. It's like a, a powder. So it sets down and it's not remotely wet. But it will move. I'm now taking my BK Beauty 207 brush. I'm going to go into this, which is a shimmer. And this is called Priceless. And I'm going to fill the first third of my lid and bring this to meet the glitter. And take it for the inner corner and underneath the brow. Now for lining the eyes, there's quite a few shades you can choose from here. So if I'm going for the cool shade look, the black is what I used yesterday and I think that worked really well with the cool shades. But because I'm going for a, I don't want to go for a reddish line actually, but because I've gone for more of a warm look, I'm going to use this brown this is called My Best Asset, so I'm going to be taking this underneath and above this height line and bring out a little bit of a wing as well. So I've finished lining my eyes and I've added mascara, so this is the final look using this palette. And this is my number one look so far, but I can keep playing with this palette for a very long time. So strongly strongly recommend trying that palette it is beautiful i love everything about it and now i'm going to finish my lips i've taken off the lip gloss i put on earlier and i'm going to show you a combination of things they're not particularly new but they're my current favorite to go with this sort of warm summery look so with the lip liner these are only three pounds these were i don't know if it was this year or at the end of last year but they're fairly new and they're really good they're so creamy so easy to apply and they really do last so this is called truth or bear which is a peachy pink And now I've got one of their O Face Satin Lipsticks. These, I think, have been around for about a year, but these are really worth trying. These are really high quality. These are £9. They come with that sort of magnetic closure. I really do like the packaging, actually. It's got a nice feel to it, the material they use. I'm not sure what it is, but it is almost satin-like. And here is the shade I've got today, and this one is Caramel Brown. And these are a lovely creamy formula, really comfortable on the lips. 
And I think this is a perfect dupe for lots of the really high-end, very expensive satin lipsticks because the formula is beautiful, the colour does last and they have got they haven't got a massive range of colours but it's still worth checking them out because I haven't been disappointed with any I've tried so far. So anyway, I love this shade with this look and I'm going to finish it off now with a lip gloss. This is the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss. Now this isn't new. This has been around for a while but they have just launched new shades and they were all shimmer so funnily enough me loving shimmer I had to pick up a few so this is the lightest one I picked up this one is champagne glam so just adding a bit of shimmer and shine to the lips to go with my shiny eyes the other shimmery one I picked up if you're interested is called sweet talk so this is more of a pinky shimmer this has that cooling effect, you can definitely feel it. I never really think these things particularly plump, but they do give a nice finish to the lip. So very comfortable, not too thick, not too sticky, not sticky at all actually. So yeah, that is my final look. So there's no point me saying which of the things I've tried on today I like, because basically I've tried on everything I have liked that I've tried this week. So everything is a hit, as you can probably tell. So I've really been impressed considering the price I've paid when I think just a few days ago I was testing out the Natasha Golden Palette and obviously Natasha Denona palettes are phenomenal and I'm not going to say Colourpop is better but I can tell you I think I've had as much fun with it, maybe a tiny bit more with this glitter because oh, love this palette, I really do, I have had as much fun with it and considering the price I've paid for the e.l.f everything really, the foundation, the bronzer, the blush, the lip products, I really love everything. I think that they are beautiful and really worth looking into. Honestly, I, I really recommend it. If you, if you only buy expensive makeup like me, do not be put off trying some affordable makeup because some of them really are well worth it and you will save yourself a lot of money. So if you're looking for the next Natasha Denona palette or the next big Dior collection, you can still get them, but why not save maybe a little bit by getting some of them from places like e.l.f. because they really are lovely. So rather than me going into great detail about the foundation longevity, I'm now going to show you video clips of me giving a, a check-in at the end of the day. So here's that video. So this is a six hour check-in, the first time I'm trying it without setting spray. So yesterday it did wear a bit differently but I didn't film that so tomorrow I will film how this looks after six hours with setting spray but without I hope it'll show here it's actually gone completely there and I haven't had much in the way of a big meal I've only had sort of a light snack that wasn't messy and a couple of drinks so I wouldn't expect my makeup to be moving all around my mouth the way it is it's coming off my chin and I can definitely see bits of caking everywhere not only that up close with a magnification mirror so from there it's looking quite shiny though isn't it so it needs to, i have powdered down so it needs to be powdered down again because it's definitely getting quite shiny and it is starting to look a bit cakey so i'm not particularly happy with the way this is looking after six hours i will keep this on actually all day and i will do a later check in for you and then tomorrow i'll do one with setting spray yeah the caking isn't horrific but i can definitely see it everywhere not just in my trouble areas i can just see it everywhere and it feels a little bit tacky to the touch one thing to add i did use the primer the elf dew primer so tomorrow i'm going to skip the primer and i'm going to add the setting spray to see if that helps with the stickiness but in theory the primer should help to grip it but maybe it would help with the caking if I skip it. So we'll see. Maybe I'll do one side, actually. I keep changing my mind. I'll do one side with primer and one side without tomorrow. And I'll do setting spray all over. So we can compare how it looks tomorrow compared with now. So it's now been just over nine hours. And I'd say that it's pretty much looking the same as it did after my midday, well, six hour check-in. I think it was six hours. Can't even remember now. Um, I'd say the chin maybe is a bit worse. You can see it's just gone completely from the chin. I am guilty of doing this and resting my chin on my hand and things during the day. It's gone from around my mouth completely. It stayed very well here. So I think the bronzer and the blush, which have that primer infused in them, 
has done something to set things in a bit. So this area is staying stayed really well. The forehead is not too bad at all either. So it's around here. So if you wanted to still look good beyond six hours, you do need to reapply here and around the mouth because it just doesn't look so good there at all. The caking is visible if you look at the magnification mirror as earlier, you can see it all over, but it's not worse. So I will try it now tomorrow, as I said, with setting spray and we'll see if there's a bit of a difference. So I'll see you then. So this is the second day now for my evening check-in. It's been eight hours. This side I wore a primer and this side I didn't, but I have today used setting spray all over the face and I think this has helped because on the whole it stayed really nicely all over. It has again moved from the chin area. I did have quite a messy salad with a lot of salad dressing which is a bit tricky so it definitely comes off with any sort of food or anything that hits it so it's not staying even with setting spray. So the longevity is still not great so I wouldn't really trust this past five six hours for a perfect sort of look but up until then it, it was quite good. But the rest of my face has worn very nicely but I don't think it made any difference with the primer. You can see the finish on the primer side and this is the side without. So there we go, that's the final report for you. So as you can see, I've gone through a few different things with this. The, it does seem to wear off around the mouth, but you really do need to use setting spray. If you use setting spray all over the face, which I haven't put on yet, I'll do it after I finish filming because it just looks a little bit damp and I don't want to wait ages for it to dry down. I will be applying it all over and then it pretty much stays really nicely everywhere apart from the mouth area depending on what I'm eating. I mean yesterday I had a salad that had oil in it so oil just removes makeup so it depends. Prior to the salad my chin was looking fine so that happens with a lot of foundations. I think this one does particularly come off a bit too quick but if you've got your setting powder and your setting spray on and you're not eating oily foods, I think you'd be very happy with the longevity you get from this. I love the finish. My problem areas are very happy with it. It sits immediately nicely on my nose, which is not easy to do for me. So overall, for the price I've paid for this, I think it's an excellent foundation. I really do and definitely recommend it. And if you really like your Tom Fords and your expensive foundations, this is a perfect option for those days where you just want a quick, easy look without maybe using so much expensive product. So I really do recommend trying it if you like that sort of finish because it's not going to give you a Tom Ford finish, but it's going to give you a finish you really do enjoy and it's perfectly fine for those days when you're not quite as concerned about having the perfect, perfect finish that lasts all day. So I'm very happy with it and happy with everything I've tried. I'd love to hear from you if you've tried any of these products. Are you a fan of Colourpop or e.l.f.? Do you have any recommendations for me? Maybe you've, you've got certain products that you love. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're maybe picking any of these up, which ones would you fancy the most? I would be really, really thrilled to hear from you. And if you're not subscribed to me, I would love it so much if you subscribed. And if you already are, I am so grateful that you've reached the end of this video and you're still here with me. And I hope to see every single one of you for my next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.